Hi, this is your host, Abhinav Bharti, and welcome to another episode of TFR Newsroom. And today we have with us once again James Hunt, director of R and D at Stark and Wind. James, it's great to have you back on the show. It's always great to be here, Flop. Uh, let's talk about Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry. Uh, as we talked last time, also these are the two technologies which are like people wrongly say they compete. They don't. They they do totally different things, and people people are using it together. So uh, talk a bit about uh, the effort that is going on there. One is you know KF, and other things to make it easy for uh, users. Because there is a huge install base where companies are using Cloud Foundry, and you know they w also want to leverage Kubernetes. At the same time, Cloud Foundry also makes it easier to use Kubernetes. There are so many KubeCF and a lot of other projects are there. So talk a lot, talk a bit about the effort that is going on within the community to make it easier for users to leverage both technologies. Google KF is is the the hot new kid on the block, so to speak. Uh, it's a it's a service that Google launched. I want to say they announced it on the 5th of November. Um, and it's it's a play on, on CF as the CFCLI, the Cloud Foundry command line utility, uh, KF being the Kubernetified version of that. It's essentially, they re-implemented most of the API for Cloud Foundry so that you can use uh, a command in a workflow that's a lot like CF, but deploy into your GKE clusters, uh, whether those are running on the cloud, in the public cloud, uh, GCP, or if you're using Google's Anthos. Um, and it's, it's interesting to me, it got me excited because it's yet another player entering into the what if Cloud Foundry, but on Kubernetes uh, market. So um, it's, it's an odd duck because it's only available inside of, of Google technologies. And what it seems that Google is positioning it primarily as a migration path. Uh, so if, you've, if you're a Fortune 1000 and you've got 20,000 application instances running on Cloud Foundry, you don't want to just pick those up and, and fork them over into a Kubernetes. It's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of rework, and you lose a lot of that velocity that the CF push story gives you. So with KF, what they're doing is they're giving you the option to KF push and end up with pods, which I think is fascinating um, because it's, it's, like I said, another player acknowledging that the CF push story is, is really powerful uh, but still wanting to end up on top of Kubernetes. So is um, you know KF you know is kind of a placeholder or a transitional project? You did you know mention that uh, there, but I want to get a bit uh, in detail there. Or it do you also see it evolve as you know a self-sustaining long-term project? It remains to be seen how long Google's gonna gonna keep that product around. They did have an open source version. You'll find it out on GitHub. Uh, under the Google org that, that I believe has been archived and they've got you pointing over to their, their hosted service. Um, I see it as an interesting transitional, but I, I see it as a little bit more than that. Looking a little bit beyond KF, it gives us a glimpse into another future uh, that might be for Cloud Foundry, and that is as an operator for Kubernetes. That Because they've already commoditized scheduling, they've commoditized a lot of service and HTTP routing which is a fair chunk of what Cloud Foundry brought to the table. Uh, if we could get all, we could leverage all that stuff in Kubernetes be an operator, like what KF I believe is doing under the hood, uh, it gives the Cloud Foundry story a new wind, uh, even, even in uh, a world that has things like KubeCF and uh, CF for Kates. The, those two I see as the uh, medium and long-term plays. KF I see Google going after the Cloud Foundry ecosystem to get more people onto GCP. Uh, but I also can see a world where other people adopt that same strategy to take just the API part, support the CF push tooling insofar as the API is concerned, and still end up on top of pods. Awesome. Now, uh, there are many projects which are kind of not same, but similar to KF. You know? So can you talk about how different is this project from other Kubernetes offering for Cloud Foundry, like you know, CF 4Ks and KubeCF itself, you know, which is the one of the recent uh, latest project. Yeah, sure. It, it does seem like everybody's trying to answer the the question of how do we get Cloud Foundry on top of Kubernetes. Um, so CF. Well, let's start with KubeCF because that's one of the older uh, offerings in the space. KubeCF takes the 
internal bits of VM-based Cloud Foundry, uh, Bosch, Monit, and a bunch of other tools that are pretty niche at this point for just deploying Cloud Foundry. And it kind of wraps those into a set of OCI Docker containers and then runs those as if you had tiny little VMs. Uh, and, and the kubectf project was started primarily to allow the core teams to continue packaging Cloud Foundry for VMs, but explore what it looks like as we move into the containerization world. Um, in, in semi-parallel or in tandem, the CF for Kate's initiative is those same core teams moving off of VMs as a packaging and VMs as a deployment substrate and embracing containerization and all of the things you get with Kubernetes uh, natively. So instead of shipping Bosch releases to be built by Bosch and deployed to VMs across a multitude of IaaSs, they're starting to ship OCI images, Helm charts, uh, a thing called KApp and YTT, and other deployment tooling that is just natively Kubernetes. Uh, by contrast, what KF did is they re-implemented just the parts of Cloud Foundry that they needed to get stuff spinning. So the, the build pack support is lacking, uh, routing and other things are a little bit rough, and, and they don't intend those to be a full, full fidelity experience. What they're trying to do is get people to move their Cloud Foundry workloads over to GKE and, and the on-prem Anthos. The only thing that is missing uh, from the la CNC of landscape is that there's, there are not enough projects there. You know, it's a very... <laughs> yeah, we need another vertical and a couple hundred more logos. <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, some of these, you know, when we look at all these projects, some of these functionalities, they kind of overlap and some sometimes there are a gap. And, and, and I mean, we can make fun of it and we should make fun of it. You know, the landscape is so huge, you need 16K monitor to look at it. But the fact is that's that's a very good place uh, for open source because what open source does is everybody is scratching their own itch, you know, so everybody creates it. But now there is a place where instead of them maintaining their own competing incompetent project, you can just bring everything together and then community can, you know, and there are a lot of merging consolidation is also happening. So what kind of future you envision for these projects? What kind of collaboration is going on? Because in some cases, the developers, they are actually, they work on all these projects together. So, so what, what do you think, where are the gaps and where do you see these projects will at some point consolidate or they solve different problems so they will continue to solve that problem in the stack. Sure. Um, so I think if I, if, again, starting with kubectf, uh, I think the kubectf project always knew that it was uh, an interim project. Uh, one of the early discussions that, that we had with the people running the project was, uh, when are we gonna shut this project down? Because this is a, a transitory, how do we get Bosch to work in containers? And at some point in the future, we will have native containers and we won't need this, this translation layer. Uh, and, and I think that's the future for kubectf. I think kubectf is going to live for as long as it takes CF for Kates to get to the same level of service stability and support that, um, that VM-based Cloud Foundry was at. The, the CF for Kates project, very new, very, I think they just launched a 1.0 beta at CF Summit this summer. Uh, they're, they're running into and grappling with issues that only pop up in Kubernetes. Uh, the biggest of which is, do we keep the tenancy solution that's built into the CF API and put lots and lots of people on one big Kubernetes cluster, or do we tell operators every business line, what you would normally call a Cloud Foundry org, make that its own Kubernetes cluster? Because these things are simple enough to spin up uh, either managed or not, you might as well just have lots of them and, and enforce that that tenancy boundary at the VM level. And so we're still solving those problems uh, and trying to get to a point where Cloud Foundry has the the, the CF for Kate story for Cloud Foundry has the same uh, com customizability that we get with the VM base. And I think once you see that 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 peak of functionality from CF for Kate's, I think that's when you'll see Cube CF taper off as people jump from the uh, VMs as containers to native containers. KF is a little bit in a parallel stream. Um, it's it's kind of just going to, as long as Google wants to keep it alive, I think it's just a service inside of GCP, unless uh, somebody else comes along and builds in the same spirit as KF, builds an operator that takes the app manifests for a Cloud Foundry deployment. 
the like seven lines of YAML that you need to say, hey, here's my code, go run it. Uh, if someone can build that into an operator, I think you'll see a lot more fragmentation in that future vision. And I think that's going to happen. I think it has to. Right. Uh, what what kind of adoption you're seeing for CF? Uh, most most cloud foundries are still VM based. Um, from from we're, at Stark and Wayne, we work with a lot of cloud foundry customers, uh, both VMware Pivotal Cloud Foundry, the, the PaaS offering, and, and the open source side. Uh, but almost all of those are VMs today. They're usually very large installations. And what people are doing is trying to to choose between do I go Cube CF uh, or do I go CF for Kates? Not too many people. And, and granted, KF literally just launched uh, earlier in November. Uh, not too many people have come to us and said, hey, we want to use this to move to GKE. But I expect that to, to pop up a little bit in Q1 of next year as, as more people realize, hey, this is a thing we could do. Um, the, the real question that we're seeing in, in the decision between KubeCF and CF for Kates is how much work am I going to have to do to modify my workloads and my development practices to support this new containerization effort? Uh, because CF for Kates, for instance, is using uh, what are called Paquito build packs, the, the cloud native build pack project, which is highly different from the older build packs that you get with KubeCF and VM-based Cloud Foundry. Uh, for example, we had to update a whole bunch of our example applications because Paquito build packs operate and combine slightly differently than the way the legacy build packs did. So there's going to be work. Uh, and, and when faced with a fair amount of rework on existing applications, some uh, players in the market are just deciding, we're just going to containerize this ourselves. If we're going to have to use build packs and change up the way our app is, is shipped, we're going to use those build packs to end up on, on Kubernetes-based pods, uh, pure, pure Kubernetes, or an open shift story. Uh, we've had a couple of, of customers go that route. Right. Uh, can you also talk about how is Stock and Veen involved with the project? What is your involvement? Sure. So we are um, mostly in the evangelism stage right now. Uh, the we're, we're helping our customers to kind of differentiate what workloads work best and what scenarios work best to do the either VM-based Cloud Foundry, KubeCF, or in CF for Kates. Um, we're also investigating what we can do to help with that rework and offer our customers assistance in the AppTX space. Um, but a lot of it is just plain up, plain old R and D. Uh, that's that's my department as the director of R and D. We are looking into what does it look like to put CF for Kate's inside of a Helm chart and install it via Rancher. Uh, what is the story that makes it low friction and low resistance to go from I have a Kubernetes and now I'd like to run a Cloud Foundry? Um, how how can we do that in as few steps as possible? And we've got a couple of projects in the works to just kind of round off those edges and smooth off that path. Since there are many projects similar to this, what are the cases where KF makes more sense? What kind of uh, users should be either investing in it or investigating KF? I, I think the people who are going to benefit the most from KF are the people who are looking to move off of Cloud Foundry without moving off of Cloud Foundry and already have a happy and healthy relationship with the Google ecosystem. Uh, if you're already spinning GKE clusters uh, inside of GCP or on-prem via Anthos to do your Kubernetes workloads, uh, and you've got a whole other fragmented set of infrastructure that you're using for either VM-based Cloud Foundry or, or if you're using KubeCF and CF for Kates, you're putting those on separate clusters. This gives you the option to kind of commingle those so that you're not separating your IaaS resources based on technology, and you get to start separating them more based off of purpose and team and business line. Uh, and and if, if, the, if a company or a customer wants to move off of Cloud Foundry, this is a good stepping stone to get to straight Kubernetes because you can then look at the pods that come out the back end of the KF uh, translation process and see how KF would have done this and then adopt those as your native deployment artifacts. We talked about it last time also. You said that you are you know, evangelizing it, but uh, 
are you going beyond just evangelizing it or you will also help customers in leverage are you like in any way commercialized productize kf we haven't seen the market demand to productize cf or kates or kf or any of those yet um we're, we're still in kind of a wait and see, I think, along with most of the rest of the industry to figure out which direction people are going. And in the meantime, our mission is to, to facilitate people who want to explore all of those options uh, so that they can apply them to their workloads and their situation to come up with an answer. Uh, James, thank you so much for taking your time out today and talk about KF and also uh, how Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes, uh, are two technologies that are being leveraged by users, and they are, I mean, of course, migrating from one to another. But it's it's it, it, these kind of projects are helping them with their process. So once again, thank you, and I look forward to talk to you again. It's always great to be here, Flop.